in this video I'm going to talk about multiplying radical expressions. The, before I even get going with anything, I'm going to say that there is one major condition for multiplying radical expressions, which is they have to have the same index, so this thing. If they're not the same, then you can't do them, and don't worry about it. I should also say that I've done an intro to radicals a video and another one about simplifying large-ish radical expressions. If you haven't seen those, I kind of go at this from a different perspective in my explanation. So if you haven't seen them, you might want to just like kick around in them for a second just to see if that explanation makes any sense to you because if it doesn't, there's a billion videos that'll show you this or how to do this. So uh, if this isn't the method for you, don't use it. So let's do some ones that can actually get a correct answer or it's possible to do one. In this case, it's uh, both square roots so we can do that. Now we can just do a little bit of combination work. So we're going to end up doing 3 times 24, and then I'm going to do times k squared times k squared. And all that's going to be underneath the square root as long as they have the same index. Then we have to combine them. So in that step, 24 times 3 is 72. And then remember when you multiply the, the numbers, the coefficients the, in front of the numbers of so the 1 and the 1, you add the exponent, so you get 2 plus 2, or k to the fourth power. From here, you kind of need to do a little bit of uh, split work. 72, you need to treat it in simplest radical form. So you're going to divide it by the squares. And I know that 30, 72 divided by 36, which is one of the squares because 6, 7, 6 is 36, gives me 2. So I'm going to treat this in this fashion. Square root of 36 times square root of 2. On the other side of it, the k to the fourth, I'm going to treat this in a whole different way. I'm going to talk about it. Instead of square root, I'm going to think of it as raising the whole thing to the one-half power. So I'm going to do this. And similarly, when I multiply the numbers, I added the exponents, because the little exponents are like the little brothers. But when I do an exponential relationship with the, with the number, so if there's a 2 here, I'd raise it to the one-half power. Um, to the fourth, I actually, at the exponent itself, I just multiply. So this goes k to the 4 times 1 half, k to the 4 over 2, or k to the second. And if you've seen the simplifying video about how to do that, it means that this is the term that actually comes out of the equation. I don't have anything left over. If I had a remainder, some of it would stay under, but I don't here, so it works out nicely. So my final answer, square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 2 is the nothing. It's square root of 2, so you just leave it. And this k to the second power, since it actually worked out nicely, pops out right there in front. So that's the first one in terms of multiplying. The next one, if I remember correctly, is kind of a beast. And it's because it's raised to the sixth power. But before we get to that headache, I'm going to just go ahead and do um, 162 times 54 which gives you 8,748. And then I'm going to do uh, 3 plus 4 and get r to the 7th. Now, to figure out what the 6th power is, you could try doing the 6th uh, root of 8,748. Here's what I ended up having to do. I raised 2 to the 6th power, ended up with 64, and then I just attempted to divide this number by 64, and it gave me uh, 136.69, that kind of stuff. So that one doesn't work. It's not a factor because there isn't an integer when I do a division. So then I tried 3 to the 6. So I ended up with 8,748 divided by 729. And when I did that one, it ended up working, and it gave me 12. So I break this 8,748 up into the sixth root of 729 times the sixth root of 12. And then from here, I brought down my sixth root of r to the seventh. From here, I know that this is 3 because I found it out that way. I mean, really, check and guess is an OK method to use. So when I pull that out, I end up getting a 3 left over. This 
there's nothing you can do with it. So we're going to end up bringing it down here in just a second. But before I get to that, I want to talk about this one right here. It's going to be r to the 7th raised to the 1 6th power. So you end up getting r to the 1 and 1 6th. Now usually you wouldn't have a mixed number here, but to me, because it's 7 over 6, that's where 1 and 1 6 comes from, um, I remember that this means I need to break it out into this, so it means that the, one of the r's actually comes out. So this r down here, since it's 1 and 1 6, I would bring down r to the first power outside of that radical sign. If it had been r to the 2 and 1 6, I'd put a 2 there. Now I need to talk about what's left underneath the uh, radical sign for what's still a root. Well, 12 doesn't do anything, so that's as far down as it goes. And for this one, my remainder here was 1 6, so it's r to the first power. So, let me tidy this up just a little bit from a visual perspective. I might have made it actually worse. That's always good. That's what you want to do. So it's 3r times the 6 root of 12r. I'm going to check to make sure that's right. And it is. It's kind of a crazy problem. Um, I think I'm going to do one more, because if you could follow that one, you could do any of them. This one, let's see if I can get one with that's some numbers out in front. I'll do this one. This one actually has a number out in front, which means I'm going to have to deal with that later. So what I tend to do at that point is highlight it in some way, and I'm actually going to use the highlighter tool here to do it. Just to remind myself to go back and not forget it. Now I'm doing square root, so I'm going to think, okay, what goes into 24? But before I do that, I can just go ahead and combine 24 and 30. And I get 720. And then 3 and 3. By the way, if these were different letters, this is an M and this is an N, you wouldn't combine them. You just put 3 and 3 over here. But in this case, they are the same. So into the sixth power. So for 720, uh, I divided 720 by 36, and that one works, but it tells me that's 20, which 4 goes in 20, so I'm going to try to up that again and do um, 64. No, 720 divided by 81. 144. Yes. So what I did at this point is I just kept dividing 720 by squares until I found out that this actually worked out. So I'm going to break out the square root of 720 into the square root of 144 times the square root of 5. Uh, for the n to the 6, or sorry, the square root of n to the 6, once again I'm going to treat it in the fraction form. So I get n to the 6th raised to the 1 half power, which is 6 times 1 half, which is, of course, 3. So this one pops out nicely. Um, the only thing I have to worry about now is, well, I have square root of 144, and that's 12, and then I end up with n to the third. It all came out nicely, and there's no leftover remainder or anything, and then the square root of 5. Fortunately, I highlighted this so because I, I have to remember, now that that's outside, I can multiply those two together. I get 5 times 12, which is 60, into the third times the square root of 5. I'll check to make sure that's right. And it is. That's a good thing. Um, and that's it, really. Combine them together, do a little bit of uh, reorganization, and then, you know, it's fine.